Hello and welcome to episode 23 of Crypto Cartography. Today we're talking content delivery networks. We're also watching a little bit of Fortnite on the organization's largest live product, Theta.tv. That organization is the Theta Network. We have 10 minutes. Let's get started. Today we're talking Theta Network, hashtag T-H-E-T-A. About 56 cents per token, around $563 million market cap. Circulating supply is 1 billion of total supply, 1 billion. Over to our TLDR investment thesis. End-to-end -end infrastructure for decentralized video streaming and content delivery that provides both technical improvements to the current CDN and a novel economic incentive system for all users. So their goal is to achieve maximum content delivery network bandwidth reduction without sacrificing the quality of service of a YouTube, a Facebook, or a Google. Now we do have a dual token system. Not only are we talking Theta token, we're talking Theta Fuel as well. Hashtag T-F-U-E-L. Their market cap is about 34 million of around 500 billion total supply, which we'll get into. So little historical timeline. We were, or, we were founded back in Q4 2015 as Sliver.tv, now Theta.tv, ICO in January 2018. Um, token issuance right after that in 2018. They raised about $20 million from their ICO at a $66 million valuation. Now let's look at token performance. They issued at a tough time, kind of at the top of the bull market at, in December 2017, January 18. But token performance, in my opinion, it has been strong, given we had a tough late 2018 and a very tough 2019 for altcoins. The price pretty much remained stable, which I really like to see. They did have a live product in Theta.tv. And now in 2000, in 2020, during this summer, we've seen a large increase in the token uh, price. Staking is now live, which I do think has helped the token price as well. So that's Good to see that they remain solid. I checked this price to the BTC chart, which also um, Theta held its value against BTC as well, which is great. So we've seen Theta.tv. I'm going to highlight in the Word doc all of their live products. Let's go through them really quickly. Their Theta wallet. Here's their Theta wallet that's available both for mobile and for computer. They sync nicely. I've tried it this morning. Um, here's their Theta and their T-Fuel wallets. We can send, we can receive, we can also stake. Let's go through the staking um, mechanism here. I can deposit my stake into a validator node or a guardian node. Two different types of nodes here, and let me highlight them. Minimum stake of 10 million theta for a validator node. Now their function is block production. Now 10,000 theta for a guardian node, probably for the retail investor, their function is block finalization. So guardian nodes do play a functioning practical role in the block production process, in, it's fi in finalization. So I can come in here, click my guardian node, click continue, and then stake my guardian nodes um, to run a guardian node. They also do have a, um, a GUI, a graphical user interface for your Guardian node. As you can see, mine's syncing. And then I also wanted to talk about the Edge node. The Edge node is um, their other live product where I can actually provide my memory and bandwidth resources to others. Let's quickly visualize that in their white paper because they've got this concept of they want to be the world cache formed by the memory and bandwidth resources of all viewers. Now, what does that mean? So a cache, let's have a look at that definition real quick. A cache, pronounced cache, is hardware or software that is used to store something, usually data, temporarily in a computing environment. So if we've got our little picture here on our white paper, that bottom um, little rectangle is the viewer's cache stream of a video. And as you can see, the blue part is still downloading. But my neighbor peer up the top has actually already downloaded that gray part. So in a decentralized um, world, I can then borrow, essentially, that downloaded data instead of downloading it myself, and therefore our distributed network is making the whole network more efficient and more cost effective. And that's pretty much what my edge node beta is doing right here that just went blank. Um, it is constantly looking for files to run, and then I can run those files and provide that memory or bandwidth and be, be compensated in T-Fuel for my latent memory and bandwidth. Checking out their website, um, Next Generation Video Delivery Powered by You. They do have a nice um, map of all of the different nodes. Our Edge Cacher nodes, about 1,800. Our Guardian nodes, about 1,300. And our Enterprise Validator nodes, are, there's about 13 of those out there in the world. So if we come down, we do want to note that Google and Binance are Validator node runners. So here is our whole ecosystem that's growing nicely. I did show you Theta.tv already. We, I did want to actually show you um, NASA's channel. 
because it's a pretty cool channel. NASA has got a 24-7 live TV network on the Theta network just running constantly. So I could see this growing into crypto TV um, and also to other 24-7 news stations where we could get our news somewhere other than, than mainstream uh, television. I did want to note also for T-Fuel, um, there is a token destruction and a token creation mechanism here. So every time it is used to pay for transactions or smart contract deployment, it's burnt afterwards. That's token destruction. And now token creation is that T-Fuel supply issuance target is about 5% annually. Here are our investment risks in terms of security risk because we're using the latent memory and bandwidth of a bunch of consumer laptops and consumer computers. I see security risk there. Validator knows centralization risk is a potentiality. Consumer adoption risk, UI UX risk when competing with the um, big tech and YouTube and Facebook and Google. And then, like I mentioned, just said, big tech risk as well, large competitive, large incumbents, hyper competitive. Going over to our Google Sheet and back to the Theta token. Um, let's talk about node economics of actually T-Fuel. So here is our minimum requirements, 10,000 and 10 million theta, or about 5,600, 5.6 million to run a Guardian and a Validator node respectively. We just said there's a yearly T-Fuel supply issuance of 5% of 5 billion, gets me 250 million. And multiplying that by today's current T-Fuel price, that gets us about 2.25 million in Validator and Guardian node rewards. Total stake theta per their explorer is 497 million. So I can then turn that into a dollar value as well. So about $280 million staked on the theta network in theta tokens. If I take my 2.25 in yearly T fuel rewards, divide that by the total amount of dollars staked on the network, we get a very strict annual ROI of about 0.8%. I can also prove that 0.8% by getting an annual T fuel per theta per year. So every T, every theta is going to accrue 0.004 T fuel per theta they owned. So if I'm talking about the validator node, I'd simply multiply that 004 multiplied by my 10 million that I'm staking to run my node, and I get about $45,000. $45,000 return on 5.65 million is about 0.80% annual strict return. I keep saying the word restrict, uh, excuse me, strict return, because this does not take into account compounding if I wanted to reinvest my T-Fuel. This does not take into account the supply, demand, price changes of both Theta and T-Fuel. This also does not take into account how much is burned each transact or each year, each month for transactions on the network, how much theta fuel is actually burnt. So I could see this being much higher and hopefully it, sit, it sits eventually around the five to 10% mark. And I think that would be nice and profitable for all the stake, stakers involved. Going to comparables, I broke them down into video, gaming, and non-DLT video. Our valuation measurements, integrations with other apps and platforms. I wanna see a lot more guard Guard, guardian networks. I want to see growth outside of the gaming streaming. The T fuel price. I need it to always be remain profitable for stakers. Um, the th I want to see the theta data delivery growth or non-video content delivery network grow really large. And I want to see higher yearly staking for um, for the ROI. I heard on a Medium article it was about three percent. Binance is going to give you one to two percent to stake your to stake your theta, um, and you can do that with as little as one theta. Going quickly down to monetization types, we have Theta token appreciation, and we have four ways to earn T-Fuel. Staking, running an edge node, which I've shown you here that's for some reason blank right now, uh, but it was it has been working for me just fine. Um, consuming content and then creating content. So we do have ways to earn T-Fuel. Now, in a dual token system, there is that question of what do we do with the utility token that we're gaining um, by staking our governance token? We could profit from that utility token and sell it to USD. We could reinvest that utility token back into the governance token and restake for compounding. So T fuel to USD to theta back to staking theta on the theta network. We could spend our T fuel if we are a participant and a mercher. That's probably best for content creators. And we can hold a lot T fuel as well. I've bolded the ones I think are, are the best. Um, and but you do have that option in a dual token system of what do we do with that with that utility token. Quickly to, to our investment portfolio sectors, um, internet video, streaming, virtual reality, gaming, esports, internet of things, content delivery network. I think these, if you need these characteristics in your crypto portfolio, Theta is probably a must own for you. Um, I do want to quickly run through our little investment exercise that we always do. 
if we raise, if we spend about $1,000, today we get about 1,700 tokens. I've estimated some market caps all the way up until 25 billion. And based on our circulating supply of 1 billion, you can look at the appreciation in token, investment value, and percentage profit here in the highlighted area. Pause your screen if you want to see this and go into those numbers. I always do see our four potential investment outcomes as failure, as selling the third or fourth BTC bull run. If we can somewhat time the market nicely, um, don't try to time the market perfectly. As, as, as always, you can dollar cost into a position and you can dollar cost out of a position as well, which I always like. And then we can also, for the long-term participants in the Theta.TV network, you can always be a hodler, a, stake, a staker, or a participant in the network. So that is our 10-minute summary of the Theta network. Um, I'm clicking back on Theta.TV just to show you it's live and running, very seamless process. Something that I didn't get into that long enough on this video is the future of the Theta network um, in terms of global data content delivery network powering that, integration with IoT devices, smart TVs, smart cars, integrate a 5G infrastructure, a beta, uh, uh, the beta of a Theta Oracle feed, a feed, excuse me, and then also decentralized digital rights management, which I think is an interesting concept. Um, so these demonstrate growth out of just gaming and video streaming, which I do want to see because you know the streaming of video games is limited in the long run. And I do want to see growth outside of that as well. So that is our analysis of the Theta network. Like and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts. If you do have more information on node economics and APYs, please leave that in the comments. As always, happy crypto investing, happy altcoin investing. See you next time.